What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Medafin or Menafin emulator for your PlayStation 4 that allows you to run uh, games from multiple different systems from the one emulator. So you can run games from like the NES and Sega Master System, uh, Sega Saturn, although I think there might be an, an issue with that one right now. But also uh, PlayStation 1 games and Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced uh, as well. So quite a few different games that you can run from this one emulator. Now this is not the first emulator to support PlayStation 1 emulation, that would be PCSXR, but PCSXR was kind of a proof of concept. Um, it wasn't really done, there was a lot of problems with it, like it couldn't save games, uh, you couldn't save or load your games, and then there was also a problem where it would only load it could only load a single game from your USB drive, so if you wanted to swap to a different game, you'd have to swap out the file on your USB drive rather than having a menu system where you could just select the game that you want to launch, uh, which is the way Modafin works. Plus, Modafin allows you to save your games and load your games for PS1 games as well, so it's just a much better emulator. So let's get into this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have everything downloaded. I'll link everything in the description. Uh, you want the Modafin PS4.rar file, um, some games that you want to run, and there are some BIOSes that you that are required. Um, some of the emulators do not require BIOS files, but some of them do. Um, I'm not going to link any BIOS packs in the description just because it's kind of a grey area. But all I'll say is that there may or may not be something called Open Emu BIOS Pack online. And if you find it, then that's nothing to do with me. So anyway, so what we're going to do is get a USB drive and make sure your USB drive is formatted in either XFAT or FAT32 format. And then we're going to open up the .rar file for the emulator and copy both uh, the folder and the package file into the root of your USB drive. Okay, and then if you have uh, the BIOS files, then you want to go into the firmware folder and the BIOS files that you want to put in here are sega underscore 101.bin, any of the scph 5 dot bin files which are for the playstation 1 i believe also the pcfx.rom oh yeah syscard3.pce so those files if you have those bios files then you can copy them into the firmware folder and then finally you just need the roms that you're going to run so i'm going to create a folder in the usb drive called roms and in that folder i'm going to put the roms so i've got mario tennis which is a um, Game Boy Color game, so we'll pop that in there. And then I've got Sonic the Hedgehog, which is of course a Sega Master System game. So we'll pop that in there. And then I have Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, which is a PlayStation 1 game. I believe you need both files, the CUE and the .bin. Okay, so once you have all your ROMs copied over, we can go ahead and unplug our USB and plug it into the PS4. Now you are going to need to have your USB plugged in while you're using the emulator because it needs to read uh, the BIOSes from that folder, that Modafin folder, plus other things as well that are required to be read from there. So you need to make sure your USB stick is plugged in when you're using it. But what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the internet browser and we're going to run uh, the homebrew enabler. I don't think it really matters which version you run, so we'll just run version 2.0 maybe 1.8 or higher. There we go, so Hen is now running. So once the homebrew enabler is running, we're gonna head to settings, and we're gonna go down to the debug settings, game package installer, and install the package file for the emulator. Okay, that's installed. Okay, so now the emulator will run, but it won't know where our games are because the games, the ROMs, are not actually loaded from the USB. The ROMs are loaded from the data folder on your hard drive. So you're going to have to copy the ROMs folder to the data folder on your hard drive. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, one way, if you have any homebrew file manager like PS4 Explorer or file manager for PS4 or Orbis Man, then you can use one of these homebrew apps to copy the uh, ROMs folder to the data folder. So with PS4 Explorer, and I'll link this app in the description, uh, with PS4 Explorer you just press uh, right or left on the D-pad to switch between USB 1 and USB 0, and there's our ROMs folder on USB 0, so I can press Y and copy it, and then I can go back 
uh, out to the root directory and then go to data. And then I can press, uh, did I say Y? I meant triangle. God, why am I thinking of Xbox? Yeah, so then just press triangle and then paste the ROMs folder into the data folder. All right, there you go. So that's us copied the ROMs there to the data folder. And now we can load that from uh, the emulator now. But the other way to do it, if you don't have any homebrew file manager installed, the other way is to do it through FTP. So if you load up uh, the exploit page, go to 5.05 .05 and then run the FTP payload. And then note down your um, IP address that pops up in this notification, plus the port number 1337. Then on your computer, you would just use an FTP client like FileZilla. You'd put in that IP address into the host box. And then you'd put 1337 as the port number and then connect. And that will connect you to the hard drive of the PS4. And then you just go into the data folder. And if we delete the ROMs folder that we copied in there, then you could just copy it straight over from your computer. So you just create a ROMs folder on your computer and then put your games inside. So we've got our ROMs folder here on our computer. And then you can just drag that in using FTP and it will copy it directly to the hard drive of your PS4. So two ways to install the ROMs there. You can either use a homebrew file manager and copy it from the USB to the hard drive, or you can use um, an FTP client and use the FTP payload on the PS4 to copy the ROMs over that way. Okay, so now we can run the uh, emulator. So when it pops up, you'll get into this menu system. So you press the D-pad down. So it'll, it'll hover over the settings um, which doesn't actually do anything at the moment. But if you scroll down with the D-pad till it highlights the actual menu and then select X, and then you can start scrolling through the menu. Now, because I have used the um, homebrew store, all of these JSON and .png files are in here, uh, which is because this is the temporary location that the homebrew store uses to store all of this stuff. Yeah, so there it is, there's our ROMs folder. And then you can just select the game that you want to load. So let's load Sonic the Hedgehog, just to show that that works. Yep, there you go, so the game is running. So it doesn't look as good as other emulators in terms of the, you know, the quality. Everything's very kind of, you know, pixelated. But I do think it runs a little bit more responsive than other emulators. So with the, with the other emulators, they may look better, but, you know, they might have a little bit more input lag compared to this one. This one's feels more responsive even though you know the actual graphical quality of it is isn't that great compared to other emulators so yeah anyway that's one type of game there that's the emulations running on just fine so moving on uh, i don't believe there's a way to actually quit out back to the menu so you are gonna have to close the program and then rerun the emulator again each time you want to load a different game but it doesn't take too long to get back up and running here all right, so back into the ROMs folder here. Okay, so now I'll select a Game Boy Color game, Mario Tennis, just to show that that loads up. As you can see, we're good, but I'm gonna quickly quit out of that because you know what Nintendo are like with not caring about fair use. I mean, even though this video is on PlayStation, I still, still don't wanna risk it. Yeah, so if I go into the ROMs menu and then I press up on the D-pad, then the menu appears. So that's what you have to do, or up or down on the D-pad. Um, okay, so then I can select uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. So for uh, PS1 games, you want to select the CUE file, not the .bin file. And there we go. The game starts loading up. So that's pretty cool. We can now run PlayStation 1 games on our PS4 as well. So, you know, because we have the PS2 emulation that's built into the PS4 to run PS2 games, but now we can run PS1 games as well. So PS1 games, PS2 games as and PS4 games can all be run on the PS4. Just not PS3, unfortunately. Um, I, I doubt that that'll ever be a thing, but who knows. All right, so here we are in the game right here. Um, do I have anything? No data, okay. So let's create a new game just to show that the save, save games actually work on this one. Okay, so now I'm actually into the game here. Let's try and save. If I head into the card shop, I should be able to save game. Which is something I couldn't do on the PCSXR uh, emulator. So let's save. Yes. Accessing memory card. 
And there you go, it actually successfully saved. Okay, so if I go back here, we can go to load, load game, yes. Accessing memory card, loading, load completed. So there you go, it works. So yeah, there you go, PS1 games work. Um, so do all the other ones. Um, I think there might be some issues with Sega Saturn with the BIOS file, but either way, it'll probably be fixed and we might see more uh, potential emulators be added in future and maybe some optimization. Uh, PS1 games, at least this game runs you know, acceptably, but it doesn't run perfectly. Um, and this is, you know, not a very demanding PS1 game. So if you're trying to run like a, a platformer like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro or something, then it's probably going to run at a very low frame rate and maybe be unplayable. So it's not perfect, but it's a good step in the right direction. And it's pretty awesome to have all these different emulators built into one um, application instead of having to have, you know, multiple emulators like this. Uh, all over the place. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Link to everything you need will be in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.